Deborah Borchardt, and this is your weekly stash. This week we are reporting from the Business of Cannabis Conference in New York City. Well, this week, the New York group, tasked with raising funds for the social equity applicants, saw their contract canceled. The group apparently had investment interests in companies that were applying for licenses, so there was a little bit of a conflict of interest. It's yet another setback for the New York program that has struggled to keep the ambitious justice program moving forward. Also in New York this week, regulators rolled back the stringent requirements for cannabis testing after cultivators said they would likely not pass with the previous measures. Earnings season is kicking off with Green Thumb Industries posting positive results that beat analysts' expectations. They had record revenue that showed the demand for cannabis is growing even as profits shrink industry-wide. Green Thumb reported third quarter revenue of $261 million. That was up 11% from last year. The Scott's Miracle Go Company didn't have as good of a quarter. They announced that sales fell by 33% in the fourth quarter to $493 million. The hydroponic division of Hawthorne saw its sales decline by 49% to $168 million. Innovative Industrial Properties pulled in revenue of almost $71 million in the third quarter of 2022. They had net income of $37 million, but their stock price continues to suffer along with much of the cannabis industry. Now, revenue was up 32% from last year, but they did run into some issues with rent collection by a couple of tenants in California. Hexo reported fourth quarter net revenue of $42 million. That was an increase of 10% compared to the fourth quarter of last year. Their net revenue for the full year was $191 million. Now here's the problem. The net loss for the full year was an eye-popping $1 billion. And finally this week, High Times Holding Corp said it was suing the people it bought the High Times magazine from, saying that the former owners lied during negotiations which caused damages in excess of $10 million. Now, the complaint was filed on October 27th, and that was a day after High Times was supposed to sign an investment agreement that would have bailed the company out of its financial predicament. And that financial predicament is due to the money it owed on the original purchase of the magazine. For now, it's not known whether this case will work as a delaying tactic for the money that they owe to their lenders. They have until November 15th to make that payment. And that's it for this week. I'm Deborah Borchardt, and this has been your Weekly Stash.